Assalamu alaikum bro. I do hope you're in good health. I want to have a second wife, but my wife doesn't agree. But my wife is doesn't agree. Please, when you make me a question, make me question with uh, uh, English, not Arablish, not Pakistanilish, English. I want to have a second wife, but my wife doesn't agree. This is expected, of course, and I even wanted to just drop it. But I still desire a second wife from time to time. What can I do? You know, you man, like, what do you want me to tell you? You know, the way you ask your questions sometimes, like, Mahdi, can you please give me a pill to take? Give me a supplement. Give me uh, uh, something to say. One line I can drop. I am going to answer this question, okay? But just the way you write your questions sometimes is like, brother, I'm not an oracle. So there's a number of points we have to break down when it comes to answering this question. And if you're new here, by the way, to this channel, my name is Mahdi Tijani. And um, I seem to be uh, quite all right at this marriage thing. I have a few wives, alhamd, more than one, less than five. My uh, generic response, in case you're wondering. Been married for almost 20 years and uh, have a great many number of children as well. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any good I have is from Him, it is not from me, and I do not claim to be anything other than anything special. All right, I'm sharing with you what I'm sharing with you based upon uh, experiences I have for myself anecdotally and the many, many men that I have helped in my private community as well. If you want to find out more about that, have a look at the link in the description. That brings me on to a great segue for a question that was asked to me by one of the brothers who's working privately with me as we speak at this moment in time. This brother, he earns over half a million a year, USD, lives in the Middle East, has a very nice life, married, has children, relatively young brother, in his mid-twenties, only a couple of kids, and he wanted to marry a second wife. So, of course, he decided to speak with me privately and see how he can go about doing this and I asked him one simple question and I said to him bro based upon how you answer the following question will dictate whether I can even recommend you to pursue this line or this this polygynous idea you have in your mind or not and that is I said to him are you prepared and willing to potentially potentially lose your first wife and current child or children as a result of you marrying again for the second time? He said to me, no, absolutely not. I said to him, then forget it. Leave it alone. He said, why? I said, because whenever you take a decision, you must always look at the worst case scenario event that could happen. And if you're not willing to accept or make peace or navigate the difficulties that come with the worst case scenario event, then just leave it alone. And one of the potential worst case scenario events that can happen when you take on a second wife is that the first wife becomes so disenchanted to the point that she wants to leave. That can happen. And there's not much you can do about it. And if you do try to do something about it, usually men, the way they try to fix this is by begging and groveling. And I'm sorry. And either he'll divorce the second wife and do an injustice to her. Puddu, coward. Or... He'll try and beg and grovel to the first wife whilst also keeping the second wife. So now the second wife starts losing respect for him because he's begging and groveling to the first wife, giving her more time than what is required and whatnot. And the first wife, Loki, starts to lose respect for him too because she knows that this man is just a pathetic. And it's just a mess all around. He said to me, no, bro, I'm not willing to deal with that. I said to him, then don't get married again. Be happy with what you have. And so many times when I'm asked about polygyny, this is the response I give to brothers. I'm like, you're just not ready for this. You're not cut out for it. You don't have what it takes because you're not willing to do what you must. I was invited onto a podcast just recently. And he, the, the host, asked me about my particular experience with polygyny. And it's quite well documented online, if you don't already know, that I have lost access to the children from my now ex-wife from the first marriage after she decided she wanted to leave when I married again. She couldn't hack it. It was too much for her. No problem. He said to me, if you could turn back time, would you get married again? Or would you not get married again so that you could continue to retain access to your children? I said to him, I'd absolutely do it again. Take me back 100 times, I'd get married again. He said, why? Would, are, are you telling me that you're willing to lose access to your children for the sake of a woman? But how he worded it. And I said to him, no, absolutely not. 
no woman is worth losing access to your children to. But do you know what is worth it? Your self-respect. It is a matter of principle that I will not allow any bitch to whip me. Do you understand? Those who understand, understand. And those who don't, they don't. I'm sorry, I can't help you. This video is not for you. Click off and go and watch something else. But if you get it, you get it. Do you get it? You already understand. And you know that no woman can whip you. Even if it means you lose that woman. And let me extend that line of thought even further. Which is today, she says to you, if you marry again, I will never allow you to see your children ever again. Which is a massive injustice. Massive volume. لا يدخل الجنة قاطع The one who cuts the ties of kinship will not enter paradise. But let's leave that there. Then tomorrow, what is it? When she, once she has sensed this weakness, once she has found your Achilles heel. Today, it's, if you get married again, I won't let you see your children. Tomorrow, it's, if you don't uh, get involved with the housework or the house chores, I won't give you sex. And the day after, it's, if you don't take me on this particular vacation or holiday, maybe I want a divorce. Women are intelligent like that. Once she finds that you have an Achilles heel that you shouldn't have, she will strike it again and again and again. So no, no woman is worth lo losing access to your children over. But my self-respect, knowing that I could have done something, I damn well should have done it. The options were available to me. I wanted to. I was within the bounds of my religion. I was doing it for the sake of Allah. And I didn't because I was scared to get whipped by my woman. Do I look like that guy, fam? Psst. You got me effed up. That ain't me. And if that ain't you either, I salute you. Because there is a lot of pain involved in making tough decisions like that. But guess what? There is also pain involved in being a puddu. And that pain is, every time you look at your reflection in the mirror, you see a potato. You look at yourself and you're like, brother, man's turned into a batata. I'm a potato. I've got no respect for my reflection anymore. And the women around me and the men around me, they can't respect me and nobody respects me. You lost your self-respect. You sold your self-respect for the sake of a woman who now has you whipped. Can never be me. And hopefully can never be you either. So this brother continues to say that I wanted to have a second wife, but my wife doesn't agree, the first wife. And this is expected, of course. And I was even considering, I even just wanted to drop it because she didn't want me to. So already I'd say to this brother, if you're not going to do it because your wife doesn't want you to do it, maybe you're not cut out for this. Maybe you're a puddu. Maybe you're a potato. Maybe it's not for you. And that's okay. I'm just saying, like, you allowed your woman to whip you, bruv. <laughs> You're on the wrong channel. But I still desire a second wife from time to time. What do I do? Very simple. You need to take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, firstly and foremostly, why do you want a second wife? Like, can you contain your desires? Do you really need to or do you really want to for that matter? Because I don't even really believe it's a need. Maybe some men need to, but for most men, it's a want. Is your want really that strong that you're willing to go through the challenges and possible worst case scenario of losing your first family for the, for the sake of sticking to your guns and taking on a second wife? Are you cut out for it? And remember, it's not about the woman. It's never worth it for a woman. But do you value your own self-respect, your own frame for that matter, if you want to word it like that, for the sake of pursuing this challenge of marrying another woman? If the answer is yes, and you are happy to live with the consequences thereof, then go for it. But don't expect your first wife to get on board and to be happy about it. Some women are more cut out for polygyny than others. Some women are more naturally inclined and aroused towards jealousy and envy than others. And some women are more subtle in their emotions and more capable and able to share a man than others. In fact, you will find some women who actually have a preference for polygyny because they like their own time. They value it greatly. They enjoy their own time and they don't want to have to take care of a man full time. She doesn't want to have to cook for him every day. She doesn't want to have to look buff every day. She doesn't have to worry about fulfilling his rights, of which they are, they are many, every single day. And the rights of the husband over the wife are many and severe. 
such that if a woman dies and her husband is pleased with her, she will enter paradise. That's how big and important the pleasure of the husband is in Islam. It's not a small thing, it's a big deal. But not all women are like that. And clearly you don't have one of those women. And I will add as a caveat that if you are married to a virgin woman, the one major blind spot virgin women have is that they don't know what they don't know. They don't have a juxtaposition. She doesn't have a comparison in her mind of what a good man is. She only knows you. And as far as she's concerned, you're the best man. You're the worst man. You're average. You're below average. You're medium. You're great. You, you are the standard. Which is normal to her. Meaning, you may well be a great man. You may well be like a one in a million brother. Unlikely, but work with me here. She won't know it. And she will be, especially if she is more easily aroused to envy, jealousy, those negative emotions. She will be very likely to pull the plug on the marriage completely. Thinking that there's another one of you just round the corner. And only able to fully realise that this is not the case once she moves on and she gets back out into the marriage landscape, older, fatter, chastened with children, when it's too late. At that point, it's up for you to, do, to decide whether you want to take her back or not. The bottom line is this, there is going to be trauma involved in this decision. And the trauma is going to be there irrespective of what decision you choose to take. If you choose to marry again, I've already clearly outlined the trauma that will be involved in that experience. But if you choose to not marry again, there is also trauma that you will have to deal with. And that trauma is your desires starting to really like overwhelm you, particularly if you are able to marry again. You're financially capable or you have options of, of sisters who want to marry you. And it becomes even harder. When you don't have options, that's one thing. But when you have options, that's another thing completely. And on top of that, you will start to resent your first wife. Whenever I talk about polygyny, and by the way, you should not resent, you, you have no right to resent her. You made this decision, but you will resent her. In any case, I will share with you my own anecdotal experience of polygyny. I have been in polygyny where it went terribly wrong. And I have been in polygyny, or I am in polygyny, I should say, for the past few years, where it has been incredible. And obviously, I conduct myself very differently now to how I did then. I had to learn the hard way through trial and error. And if you don't want to learn the hard way, then hit that link in the description and we can have a conversation, inshallah. Irrespective, I can tell you, bro, when you're in polygyny and you're able to manage your women appropriately and correctly, you can juggle their emotions the right way. And, and it really is a juggle. If my hand is a husband and this bottle is a wife, throwing and catching this bottle, yeah, you can even do little tricks like that, relatively easy. Easy, right? Give me another bottle in my hand. I don't have another one, but okay. That's a fat wife, bruv. <laughs> ah! If I had another bottle like this, okay, and I tried juggling both of them with one hand like that, I'm going to drop the bottle. You're going to drop the ball. It takes uh, an, an additional level of skill to be able to juggle those bottles in the way that it needs to be juggled to maintain them both in your hand. Pelagian is the same thing. If you do it wrong, and there are many ways to do it wrong, you can mess up your life. But done right, oksim billah, it is an incredible experience. One that is hard for me to describe with words. You have to experience it to understand it. Everything is heightened. Your mind is sharper. Your drive is higher. Not just physical, sexual drive, which is also higher, by the way. But your ambition, your drive for life. You're just more alive. Everything is sharper. And if you want to know how I managed to convince my own wife, well, I didn't convince her, she didn't really have a choice, but how I managed to cur curate that environment for my wife to not just accept me taking on new wives, but to be happy about it, then I suggest you watch this video right there.